everyone, Charles Watts here. Welcome back to Inside Arsenal. Welcome to the start of another week. It is Monday. I hope the weekend went well, wherever you're watching or listening to this around the world. And I hope your Monday has got off to a decent start as well. Plenty to discuss. As always, today we're going to be talking about Emil Smith-Rowe. Yes, I know. I love to talk about Emil Smith-Rowe, but he is in the headlines in the last 24 hours with more reports about potential moves for the Arsenal Academy product. We're going to talk about Benjamin Sesko. Of course, Victor Rossman continues to be linked with Arsenal. Lots of stuff. We've got lots of questions and comments. Plenty of reaction to what we were talking about yesterday when it comes to the whole left-back situation at Arsenal and what they could potentially do or not do this summer when it comes to that position. So plenty to get stuck into. And we'll start with Emil, shall we, who... After I recorded yesterday's video, um, Mike McGrath with the Daily Telegraph, fantastic um, journalist, brilliant when it comes to transfers as well. He reported exclusively that Fulham have made Emil one of their priority targets. Now, in yesterday's show, we were talking about potential destinations for Emil should Arsenal allow him to leave. I was saying Crystal Palace sounds like quite a good fit for him. Potentially a club like Brighton, maybe Fulham. Didn't mention, didn't really think about Fulham as a potential destination, but it, I mean, it's certainly a decent one for him. Wouldn't wouldn't involve too much of a move. Decent side under Marco Silva, play good football. Um, and they are a club that are looking to push on and build on what's been a decent couple of seasons for them. Um, so I think it would tick plenty of boxes. Napoli have been linked with him as well recently. Um, some reports sort of linking him with a sort of some part of a swap deal with Victor Osman, possibly, which I just don't see anything sort of of any substance being in that having sort of known what I know about the situation there are options for Emil to potentially go abroad this summer but his preference if he leaves Arsenal and it's still a big if nothing's been decided yet when it comes to that even though it looks pretty likely but if he leaves Arsenal his preference is to remain in the Premier League despite interest from abroad and Fulham like I said would tick lots of boxes play good football um you know the squad they're building is pretty decent I think he goes in and he starts. And that's the most important thing is that, you know, I know for well what Emil wants this summer if he does move. He wants some stability in a career that has sort of flatlined a little bit in the last couple of years. But he wants to play. You know, he needs to play. It's clear he needs to play three starts in two seasons in the Premier League for Arsenal. For a player of his quality and ability and his age, it's just not, it's not what's needed. And he needs to go on. So I think the choice that he makes this summer, if he does go, is all going to be centred around... I mean, you can't be guaranteed playing time anywhere where you go, but you've got to sort of pick and choose and, and look what the most likely thing is because he just needs to go out and play now, get regular football, show that he's not this sort of injury-prone player that a lot of people seem to believe that he is, uh, even though, to be fair, he hasn't had that many injury problems since he's come back from that operation in the middle of last season. On the whole, he's been largely fit. He's just not been used when it comes to Arsenal. Well, I think Fulham would be a really decent move. Um, I think we'll we'll learn more in the next couple of weeks in terms of what happens with Emil and what sort of direction his um, career path seems to be heading in. But as I said, the likelihood is I think he will go and I think it's it's the right time for him to go. But let me know your thoughts on that. Do you think Fulham would be a decent move for Emil Smith-Rowe? Do you think maybe abroad would be a good move for him? Let me know, of course, in the comments below. Uh, Arsenal just confirmed, actually, just before I started doing this video, which is quite interesting, um, the 22 players who are going to be leaving the club at the end of their contracts on June the 30th. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see the full list of the 22 there. Of course, they include some some of the bigger sort of first team names like uh, Cedric Suarez, um, Mohamed El Nenny, got Vivian Miedemar, of course, who's leaving the women's team after Conquo, after his fantastic loan with Wrexham last summer. He's going to be very, very much in demand, but he's at the end of his contract at Arsenal and not signing a new one. So he's headed off lots of other names, including there like uh, Maron Band Bandera, Amari Benjamin uh, as well. Interestingly, Arsenal also announced, and I'll just get the, the sort of word in right on this, they've said that please note, Players' contracts also expire on June the 30th and discussions are ongoing. And once matters are finalised between all parties, we will communicate in due course. And the players that they're talking about there are Amario Cozy at Dubry, Carl Hine and Raul Walters. Now, we know about Cozy at Dubry. Arsenal are very keen on keeping him. They've offered a new contract to him. But at the moment, that has not been signed. There's been interest in him 
understandably because of his talent from a wide range of clubs, both abroad and in England, Newcastle heavily linked. So we knew that was happening. The Walters one's interesting because Walters took to social media and confirmed his exit from Arsenal. You know, he did a big sort of emotional goodbye type um, type post. So it was kind of at that point, it was just like, well, that's, you know, he's gone. And we knew Arsenal were hopeful of getting him to sign a new contract or were trying to get him to sign a new contract. But the fact he'd, he took to social media and announced his exit made you think, well, that's it, done and dusted. But perhaps not. Perhaps uh, Arsenal do believe there's still a chance of convincing him to sign a new deal. Oh, and Carl Hine, actually. The, the Carl Hine one's interesting because that, that would solve a bit of an issue for Arsenal, I think. Because if they could get Carl to sign a new contract, then you've kind of got your third choice goalkeeper already sorted, which in a in a summer where you are fully expecting to have to go and sign a, a new second choice goalkeeper, should Aaron Ramsdale leave, which we all expect him to do, you'd rather not have to go out and also sign a third choice in the same summer. So if they could get Carl Hein, convince him to sign this new deal and have him even for just one more season, I think it would solve a very useful problem for Arsenal. So we'll wait and see what happens. But that was what was announced in the club statement today. There's the 22 players who have gone. Cozy Dubry, Raul Waters and um, Carl Hein discussions are ongoing with the three of them. And Arsenal say they will update in due course. Just quickly on a couple of the sort of transfer whispers that you're going to be probably seeing doing the rounds on on the internet over the next day or so. Victor Rossman, there's reports that Arsenal are um, that he's expecting Arsenal to make a move for him this summer. Like I said, there were also reports that Arsenal are potentially looking to include Emil Smith Rowe in the deal. I saw Tommy Asu as well, potentially two players including the deal to get Osman. They're all reports coming out of Italy, as I've said with Osman, and I'll continue to say unless I hear anything different, is that just what I have been told going into this window is not to really expect any superstar signings. And I would certainly put Victor Rossman in, in that sort of category of superstar, you know, big, big names I'm talking about when it comes to that. Um, so I'm a bit, whenever I hear anything at the moment about Victor Rossman, I'm a bit skeptical. It kind of feels a bit like sort of agent work or just, you know, headlines being written abroad. And, you know, all the reports about Osman at the moment are coming from abroad. Um, we know that him and Chelsea, sort of any talk seem to have broken down with them. And so you'd imagine if you're a part of Osman's camp, you're pretty keen to get his name out there and it's very easy to get it linked to Arsenal. But it's nothing that I've heard of any sort of substance that Victor Osman could be something on the agenda for Arsenal at the moment when it comes to the summer. But, you know, if that changes, we'll have to wait and see. And like I said, market opportunities can always change a club's thinking in a transfer window. But I'm not really expecting too much because at the moment, Benjamin Sesco is certainly the player that Arsenal are looking at bringing in when it comes to signing a forward. As you can see here, if you're watching on YouTube, he was in London at the weekend. There he is with his agent Elvis uh, at the Champions League final, cutting a very uh, sort of Eminem type haircut there. I had to do a double take when I first saw this picture. I was like, is that, is that actually Sesco? It doesn't even look like him. He looks so different there. It looks like a very clean cut, slim shady, doesn't he? Uh, but he was in London at the uh, at the Champions League final. And, um, well, you know, things are certainly sort of bubbling away under the surface when it comes to Sesco. And uh, as I said yesterday's show and other shows during the during the week leading up to it, this is certainly one I expect to will know definitively one way or the other how this one could go in the next couple of weeks before the Euros. That is the aim. He wants it sorted. I think Leipzig want it sorted as well relatively quickly. So um, it wouldn't be surprising if that's one that moves on. And that's why when I hear this awesome end stuff, I just take it all with a little bit of pinch of salt at the moment because Sesco is certainly the player at the top of the agenda when it comes to Arsenal and bringing in a forward this summer. Injury update wise, Bakaya Saka not going to be involved for England in their game tonight. Gareth Southgate confirming that. Obviously, missed the end of last season. Um, missed that game against Everton, didn't he have an injury issue? He has linked up with England, but he's continuing to get treatment on that. Southgate did say, though, ahead of today's tonight's game, that he is hopeful that Saka will play some part in Friday's game for England, which will be their last game before the Euros, um, which is good news, obviously, for England, for Saka and for Southgate, especially such a key player for him. You want him fully fit ahead of the Euros, and it seems like he is going to be fully fit, which is going to be a big boost. Uh, William Saliba not included in France's Olympic squad. Thierry Henry has confirmed that squad today. Saliba is not in it. Henry wanted Saliba to be a part of it, but clubs do not have to release their players for these for the Olympics because it's not a UEFA sort of FIFA accredited tournament. So they're, they're not under an obligation like they are for a proper 
international tournament. And France wanted to include Saliba, Henri wanted to include Saliba, but Arsenal were having none of it. And lots of clubs were very, very similar. I saw a quote doing the rounds from Henri from this press conference that he announced today that he hasn't had this many rejections since he was at school, <laughs> um, which made me laugh. Um, but yeah, Saliba. I mean, it makes perfect sense. If you're Arsenal, you're just like, why on earth would we let William Saliba go to the Olympics? He's going to be part of the Euros, come back from that, and then suddenly going off to the Olympics to play for France as well. You're going to miss the start of the season. You're going to have no downtime whatsoever. A player as important as that, you just wouldn't even entertain the idea of him being included in that. So um, I imagine he, he might be a little bit disappointed. Obviously, it's in France, it's in Paris. Um, I'm sure him and other players wouldn't have mind representing their uh, country at the Olympics, but from a club point of view, when you're under no obligation and you're paying their wages, then nah, not uh, interesting. Actually, Michael Lise is included in that squad, uh, Thierry Henry squad for that. Um, still could technically play for England, Michael Lise, but he's been named in the France squad for the Olympics. Okay, before I move on to some of your questions and comments now, I just wanted to, as Paul here has pointed out, dreadful news about Super Kevin Campbell. Thoughts and prayers are with his loved ones right now. And Arsenal tweeted out today, uh, everyone at the club is sending love to Kevin Campbell and his family following news that our former striker is very unwell. We're thinking of you, Kevin Campbell. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just really, really sad. I, I Obviously, not many of you would have met Kevin Campbell before. I've met Kevin Campbell a few times before and it sounds a bit cliche, but you always hear it said, oh, it's such a lovely guy. You know, one of the nicest guys you'll meet in football. And that sort of sentence is thrown out a lot. And, you know, when, you know, as fortunate in, in fortunate enough position as I am to meet a lot of play, people in and around football, that sort of words are said a lot, you know, is one of the nicest guys when it comes to football. But genuinely, when it comes to Kevin Campbell, that is absolutely true. He is just such a nice bloke always has times for you so welcome him you know he anyone walks up to kevin campbell and wants a picture wants to shake hands wants to have a little word he will do it he will give you their time he's such a genuinely nice guy and it's so sad to hear how unwell he is and like paul and others who have sent in comments i've seen as well um just pass on my best to him we're all thinking of him, you know, super Kev, what a player he was when he came through at Arsenal. I was there as a kid watching him um, score all those goals and just come through from the youth team and represented Arsenal, Nottingham Forest, Everton, all the clubs he's at. You can see the outpouring of sort of um, best wishes for him. This news has come through that he's so ill and that just says a lot about him. Everywhere he's been at, he's touched everyone because he's such a nice guy and he, and everyone's just really, really rooting for him and his family and hoping Kev can come through this and we'll see him back on our TV screens very, very soon. So good luck, Kevin Campbell. We're all, uh, we're all thinking about you. Okay, moving on to some questions and comments now before I wrap this one up. Here's one from Keith, who's discussing the left-back position, which is what we spoke about yesterday. He says, Ari left-back, if it's a choice between offloading Zinchenko or Kivior, I'd sell Zinchenko. Kivior still hasn't reached his ceiling, and along with Tommy, Timber and Benny, he can play a variety of positions across the back. Kivior also has more aerial presence. I don't think we need another left-back. Looking at Benny, he was brought in as a centre-back who can play right-back or six, but he's now one of the best right-backs in the country from economic perspective the priorities are a nine who offers variety from Havertz back up for Saka although Gabby J can easily cover on both sides we still need to pay the 30 million for Raya which will no doubt be offset by the sale of Rambo the big one for me is a top tier six to allow Rice to go box to box and maybe dovetail when required as for the inverted role I'm confident that both Benny and whoever sits at left back ideally Timber have the following IQ have the footballing IQ to know when one inverts the other tucks in number three look it's really good point um really good post Keith I thought everything you said there makes so much sense to me uh in terms of where the priority needs to be and what position you know what you could potentially do at left back the the Zinchenko Kivior debate is an interesting one I absolutely get what you say when it comes to Kivior in terms of what he can do I do feel like we've not seen Zinchenko potentially used in his best position at Arsenal though as well I would love to see him as an option in that left eight role but I think if you are going to sell one this summer I agree I think Zinchenko is probably the one to sell given his age given he's only got a couple of years left on his deal given he suddenly found himself way down the pecking order recently and also just because he kind of divides opinion now and as annoying as that is for a reason to get rid of a player. I think it's quite important because at Arsenal, what they've built over the last few years is on 
everyone pulling in the same direction, everyone getting on. The fact that Zinchenko seems to have suddenly become this kind of lightning rod for argument and division between the fan base. It's something we haven't really seen for a fair while when it comes to a player. I'm not sure that's a good thing when it comes to what Arsenal are trying to, uh, what trying to, uh, trying to do. So I think if a good offer comes in, and it needs to be a good offer, because Zinchenko is a very, very talented footballer who's still got an awful lot to offer. It needs to be a really good bid. But if one does come in, I think you probably move Zinchenko on this summer. I think you're right. And there's a few more of you have got in touch when it comes to the left backs. I want to hear from Treasure. It says, hi, Charles. We shouldn't sell Zinni. He's too good going forward. I think it's best we move him to left eight, which is what I was just talking about. Uh, Johnny Bravo there says, if we get our money back on Zinchenko, then let him go. But doesn't need to get replaced. Carlo says, hi, Charles. As a Caribbean boy, of course I'm picking West Indies in the T20 World Cup. England, Australia and India will be right up there as well. Well, look, you all know my, my roots. My mum was from St. Vincent. So I'm half Caribbean myself. And uh, yeah, if England don't win it, they'll absolutely love the Windies to win it. It'd be absolutely fantastic. So uh, I'll certainly be cheering them on if uh, if England aren't going to do it. But you say in terms of the left-back situation at Arsenal, I think if we sell Zinchenko with Ben White playing the inverted role, then I think we can play Tierney as a natural left-back. And in games, Arteta wants the left-back inverted. Then we play Timber or Tomiyasu. This gives us flexibility and options. And uh, MHE87 says, I don't understand the Tierney situation. The main problem before seemed that he couldn't play the inverted role, but now that White and Timber can play as inverted right backs, I would think we now have a system again that Tim Tierney can be successful in as left back. There were many games this season. We looked great with Kivior at left back and White as inverted right back. Surely Tierney can play that better than Kivior in that role. Maybe not every game as a starter, but as part of the regular rotation, what do you think? The thing with Tierney is, I don't think it's just purely about Tierney now, uh, about Arsenal now and fitting into the system. I also think it's about Tierney. He wants to go and play. He's not going to be happy coming back to Arsenal and sitting on the bench and barely getting any minutes. This is a top level international player we're talking about here. He wants to go and kick on in his career. Um, I also think Arteta puts so much faith and belief in being players being available. And I think the injury issues with Tierney, which didn't go away when he went to Sociedad. In fact, they really sort of hampered him being able to go on and, and really sort of push on and make, an, make a good case for them signing him permanently because of the injuries. That'll always be in the back of Arteta's mind as well when it comes to Tierney. So I think we just have to all move on from Kieran. As good as he is, as popular as he is, and as big of an impact as he made when he first came to Arsenal, I just think kind of similar to Emil, for all parties, this feels like a good summer if a good, you know, if their market is there for for Tierney to sort of kick on in his career and move away from Arsenal. And finally, there's one here from Jeff. It says, hi, Charles, random thoughts regarding our transfer business this summer. What are your thoughts on us just signing Hato, Neves or Bruno and Sesco? So three sign-ins. And then we say we get a good offer um, that's too good to refuse for Kivior. We replace him with a Diamande or we get an offer of Jesus that meets, exceeds our valuation. And we sign a Xerxes, another player I've seen lots of reports linking us to. Do you think that would be considered a successful window or are there other areas that need to be addressed? Personally, I'd like to see us sign another winger on either side. So at least uh, we could use Martinelli on the right since he played there well against Everton on the last game to cover for Saka because it's really not good enough that he's having to play quite so many games without a break there. Just wondering your thoughts. Look, if Arsenal finish the window, look, they have to sign a goalkeeper, no doubt about it. You haven't got a keeper listed there. You said, what are your thoughts on us just signing Hato, Neves and Bruno and Sesco? Look, if Arsenal ended the window signing Hato, who they definitely want, one of Neves or Bruno and Sesco, I think Arsenal would think that's a really good window. And I think it would definitely be a good window. You've basically improved the spine of your team there, or you've really sort of strengthened the spine of your squad there with another addition from defence. In Bruno, especially if you signed a Bruno, you've got a ready-made player to come in and make the team potentially better in an experienced central midfielder. And then you've got Sesco, who's your top target as a forward. So I think you sign those three players. If you're Arsenal, you are very, very happy. But you have to sign a goalkeeper as well because of the Ramsdale situation. So that's really, really important. Um, and that's a backup keeper. Obviously, Raya, uh, Raya is going to sign as well on a permanent basis, but you need to sign a backup. I do think a winger is really, really important. Jesus can cover that role, no doubt about it. But I do, you know, I'd much rather see a proper, another wide option brought in. I think I'd be really happy if that finally happened in this window i don't know if it will but i'd be really happy if it did happen this window i think if you could do that you could sign those players that you're talking about get a decent backup for for ramsdale and add a winger it's a big ask because you're talking about five quite big high profile signings there in one transfer window it's a big ask but if you did do that 
I think you'd be really, really satisfied. If you don't get a winger in, then but you get the other four, I still think that's a very positive window for Arsenal. But you definitely need Jesus centre players a bit more as a wide man, I think, to cover for the two wingers. And that's it from me, everyone. Thank you very much for your time. As always, I really do appreciate it. Have a very good end to your Monday. I'll be back to do it all over again tomorrow. Anything you want me to talk about in that show, you know what to do. Get into the comments with your opinions, your questions, your comments, and I'll pull some of them together and get them included in tomorrow's show. Until then, have a fantastic start to your week, everyone. Speak to you very soon. Bye-bye.